Anyway, the uh, former Navy SEAL and the operator author, Rob O'Neill, is here on, on where this is all going. I mean, this is kind of scary stuff, Rob. They, it's getting a little more agitated. Right? It can be scary. And the good news is nobody wants war. Even the Ayatollah came out on his Twitter, which he knew President Trump would read, because it turns out our president likes to get on Twitter right. once in a while. I was that, surprised mm, that he had a Twitter page. Yeah, they have an official page over there, too. Yeah, they don't let everybody there cool. use Twitter, but apparently he can put they the war out one. there. Yeah, right. But they're admitting they don't want war, and we know that they don't want war. But, but when you've got this kind of environment, it doesn't take much to trigger one. It doesn't. That's the issue. The issue is not going to be with, like, uh, uh, what's his name, General Soleimani of the Quds Force, the, the Revolutionary Guard. The problem could be when we, because we've got a lot of ships over there. There's a strike group. There's a, the 22nd uh, Marine Expeditionary Units over there with the, with the Kearsarge, which is an amphib uh, ready group. Some of those uh, maybe junior officers or senior enlisted that kind of want to get it on a little bit with the Navy, if they get too close to those fast attack boats, they're going to find out the <laughs> they're going to find out the hard way. We have uh, destroyers over there, and we didn't name them destroyers because we ran out of names. They destroy things, and uh, if that happens, that could potentially uptick something that we don't want to happen but we're there as a deterrent now um, we you know th this is a, a normal um, deployment for the uh, the carrier group the the Lincoln but they uh, they pushed it forward to, to, to the to fifth fleet over in the uh, the Persian Gulf because now it's time to deter uh, nothing nothing is as scary as having a carrier off your coast yeah that would unnerve me a little bit you know we had uh, your old commander on the crib on yesterday um, and he was talking about the Iranians, it wouldn't be surprised, he had 40 years of dealing with them, knows what he's dealing with and doesn't think this will come to blows here because the, the, the Iranians might be reckless, but they're smart enough. Yeah, and to not do yeah, and we're talking to Admiral McRaven, you're talking to someone who's probably the smartest guy in the room. And he knows that we've been, and he personally dealt with them for decades as well. We've been dealing with them, and, and that's the thing that, you know, they are, uh, they are radical, the leadership is, and, and the mullahs, but they are smart. They've been doing it for a while. They know what they can get away with. They know how um, a lot of our politicians and a lot of our public fields having gone to a war in Iraq, in Afghanistan still, both places still going into right. Syria. We're not eager to get but into war. But he did war. say, you know, sometimes you'll get a difference of opinion within a president's staff. He was obviously alluding to the John Boltons, who might not be on the same page as, you know, other foreign policy aides the president gets. But he has confidence in general in the president's team. To you? He, he does. And, and I think Admiral McRaven really likes Secretary Pompeo. And, and uh, yeah. Pompeo is a, a good one. And Bolton's a good one, too. It's not like anybody wants to go to war. The other press will say that, that Bolton really wants to go to war. That's kind of his thing. I don't think that's the case. And I think... But the, even the president joked about the mixed signals his administration. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah. Well, there's going to be mixed signals right. everywhere. We had people in the Obama administration that didn't want us to go after Osama Bin Laden. Uh, oh, by the way, I, now that you're here and you're the guy who took that guy out, uh, McRaven was telling an interesting story how after uh, Osama Bin Laden was killed and you killed him, that they wanted to make very sure that he was the guy. Yes. But he was very tall. That's all he knew. And he was looking around at his men and yep. saying, well, who's about that height I think, to yep. compare? The Is tallest it? guy we had there was one of our snipers, and I think he was 6'2". And so Admiral McRaven asked him to lay down next to Bin Laden's body, which he did. And that was part of it. That with the confirmation from some of the relatives inside, with the DNA later, and then that as well. We're trying to get as many things as we can for redundancy to make sure that it's him. But uh, one of the plaques that President Obama gave to Admiral McRaven had a tape measure on it. Just to make Yeah, sure just like, in case yeah. you ever need one again. We but, but it was interesting. You knew New, though, right? I mean, it, it, when 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 you stormed into that house, I mean, you, you had no doubt. Why why did you? I knew that for Bin Laden, I I was sure simply because of the three letter agency people. There's a group of women that found him, and just how confident they were, and they turned out to be one woman in particular, 100 percent right about 100 percent of the people inside. She knew where the Khalid would be. She knew where she she was so frustrated, saying. Um, if you want to shot at Osama bin Laden, he's in, on the third floor of this house right now. I don't understand why we're not leaving. But I was sure going in. I was sure when I saw him. When I saw him standing up on two feet, I recognized his nose. I, re I recognized his, his beard was shorter and white. But that was, no doubt in my mind when I shot him. And then it sunk in about four seconds later that we just got Osama bin Laden. And you also told me that in the case of the one helicopter that crashed near the compound, they certainly would have had to hear that. They knew yeah. something was up, right? Yeah. The inside, they were sure. And even if you read Amal bin Laden, who's the youngest wife, right. she has a... She has a um, uh, on the record report of what happened from her end, and it's the same as mine. And I guess he was saying to her, he being bin Laden, that uh, um, they're here for me. Uh, so he was trying to get her to leave or whatever. She was, she was there when we went up yeah, there. But, incredible. yeah, they had to know we were there. We listened to a phone call one time between the two brothers. There were his couriers. Uh, <clears throat> the cell phone call they had right before my guys killed them, engaged and killed them. Before, you know, they shot at us, too. Um, yeah, it was quite a time. But I, I mean, we trained so hard, had the best assets we could, the best pilots in the world, the best air crew, the best intel. And I, I was smart enough to carry a sledgehammer and a gun. I followed some brave people up a set of stairs, and I turned the, the right corner.
It's just amazing. I know you hear this all the time, Rob, but each and every one of you knew you might never get out of that. We were pretty sure. We, my small team of about eight guys, we were calling ourselves the Martyrs Brigade because we were supposed to be on the roof of the main house when it blew up, when he martyred himself. And we, accept, we accepted it because of what happened here in New York and in Pennsylvania and in Washington and, and, and uh, terrorism around the world. You're a different breed, young man. All They're right. out there still, I promise. Oh, man. Rob O'Neill, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Neil.